Giving Up the Ghost, an autobiographical memoir published in 2003 by novelist Hilary Mantle, delves into themes of childhood, ghosts, both real and imagined, illness, and family while incorporating elements of fantasy. Using the metaphor of ghosts, Mantle explores the memories she carries within herself, whether consciously or as a result of trauma, and assigns them names to gain control over their roles and emotional impact. Mantle begins by acknowledging the presence of ghosts throughout her life. She describes how she tends to them, ensuring they are cared for and provided for, much like one would do for house guests. She introduces some of these ghosts by name, such as Jack, her stepfather, whose presence she senses through the peculiar sound he makes on the stairs of her weekend home in Norfolk, Virginia. Another ghost is Catriona, her unborn daughter, depicted as an Irish-looking girl with a penchant for material possessions, money, domestic chores, and driving. According to Mantle, these ghosts are common to all individuals, although they may not be readily identifiable. She argues that ghosts symbolize the unexplored aspects of ourselves, the experiences we have chosen to ignore or leave behind. Each male birth generates a corresponding female ghost, and for every lover, career, or hometown, countless other possibilities remain as ghosts. Mantle believes that these ghosts, representing the lives she can never live, prevent her from embracing a sense of wholeness and personal authenticity. She reflects on how her parents shaped a blueprint for her life even before she was born, depriving her of the opportunity to choose her own path. As Mantle delves deeper into her life, she reflects on her experiences at the convent of the Nativity, where the nuns attempted to mold her into a devout Catholic girl, leading to the proliferation of more ghosts within her. Striving to meet the expectations set by this model, she found herself grappling with conflicting identities. Later in life, as Mantle sought answers for her existential pain, she visited various doctors who assigned her labels such as neurotic, depressed, and hysterical, adding more layers to her identity. The medical journey eventually culminated in a hysterectomy that left her feeling disconnected from her own body. In giving up the ghost, Mantle discloses that her aim, at the age of 50, is to embark on a fresh journey of self-discovery and articulate her true identity. She acknowledges that the most challenging aspect will be reconciling with her memories. Mantle observes a trend in recent memoirs, noting that many have become fashionable and self-assured, often neglecting the raw truth at the core of the human struggle. She emphasizes the importance of understanding that the manner in which a memory is recalled is crucial in uncovering its deeper emotional truth. Mantle recognizes that societal conditioning often obscures our emotional reality, but suggests that through introspection, we can gradually unearth our emotional truths. Following her own advice, Mantle vividly describes the emotional landscapes of her working-class upbringing in Derbyshire during the 1950s. She recalls specific details like oxblood-colored paint, boxes of cheap candy called Weekend, and a family piano with a broken middle seat key from years of heavy use. Through these sensory memories, she discovers that revisiting the emotions attached to ordinary objects and aesthetic forms not only illuminates how they have changed over time, but also reveals how her emotions were intelligent responses to those changes. Drawing an analogy, Mantle likens childhood to a state of war, a sanctuary perpetually besieged by ordinary figures, particularly teachers, who seek access to and seek to reshape the inner world of a child. She reflects on the significance of corporal punishment as a stark illustration of how adult figures can intrude upon a child's mind. Even as the head girl in school, she asserts her autonomy by rebelling against the dress code that required navy pants. Mantle also delves into her past through a biological lens, considering the impact of endometriosis on her life. Despite taking various medications to mitigate its effects, she ponders whether it has influenced her brain and personality. She mourns the fact that the body, in its true mechanistic nature, lacks the plasticity to reshape itself as myths and narratives suggest. She also confronts the public judgments surrounding her uncontrollable weight gain, aware of how it affects her physical appearance. In the concluding moments of her memoir, Mantle questions the whereabouts of the little girl she once was when she gazes into the mirror. She senses the ghost of her former self drifting gently through her dreams, but finds the mind of her childhood self-elusive and inaccessible. With clarity and self-awareness, giving up the ghost becomes Mantle's personal mission to confront and exorcise some of her ghosts, reclaiming the narrative she has always desired.
I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.